Hello and welcome to another episode of Historic Hindsight. I'm John, that's Tom, and today we're going to talk to you about dead presidents. That's right, Johnny. Specifically four dead presidents that we decided to immortalize on the side of a mountain for tourism. Why? I mean, why? Yeah, why? It's, Man, it's, Mount Rushmore obviously is, is, yeah. is what we're talking about. And where is Mount? Is that where is it even? That is South Dakota. It is the glorious symbol South of a Dakota. Yeah, glorious symbol of American democracy, carved out of nature, and is really, like I said, nothing more than a giant tourist <laughs> trap akin to the red rocking chair off of Route 66. And if this <laughs> statement is making you no. mad about me making yeah. fun of Mount Rushmore, then go ahead and tune off because this whole episode is going to be about oh, no. how Mount Rushmore became a thing. And and why it why it really should shouldn't. So we're not going to talk about right. how like how, how glorious all the presidents were who are immortalized mm. on it, or mm-hmm. how this was some. I mean, it's it's like a, it's a Statue of Liberty esque national symbol, is it not? I uh, I mean, it's on that. It's a, it's akin to that. It's one of the. I don't know if we have seven wonders of the Americas, but it's one of those like things that all Americans yeah, are supposed yeah. to. Like you're supposed yeah, to see Niagara Falls, Mount M- Mount Rushmore, Statue of Liberty, uh, um, yeah. uh, uh, Golden uh, Gate Bridge, Golden Gate Bridge. Like yeah, yeah. Those are those are the things that we're supposed to see. Uh, the Smoky, the what is that? The the geyser thing Grand that Canyon? explodes. Oh. Well, that yes. Well, that yeah. <laughs> yeah that was, Sto- yellow, that was yeah, probably old, fa- yeah. old faithful. Old faithful. That's that's the one I was going for. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but you know, it, it, what better place to start than the history of the land that this monument sits on? That's yeah. the best starting point that I could think of to discuss this, and it's where a lot of people have the even up to today are a little irked about because you know there may have been a treaty that was signed that may or may not have been violated multiple times. Okay, now I, I'm just going to assume that this was a treaty with Native Americans. Yeah. And this was just another more land that we just stole from uh, them, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, but let's let's go all the way back, Johnny. So so Mount Rushmore sits in the Black Hills. It's a small mountain range that rises out of the plains, which is in South Dakota and into Wyoming. So yeah, okay. and, and by small mountain range, it isn't like the world's tallest mountain by any stretch of the imagination. It's a mountain. It's a mountain. It's, it's just mountain, not, yeah. you know, it's just not a big one. It's, it's not the Rockies. It's not, yeah. There you go. Yep, 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 yep. First human artifacts in the region date all the way back to 11,500 B.C., uh, and they are a part of a tribe called the Holy Clovis. Cow. Yeah, the Clovis peoples, who are a prehistoric group that ranged from New Mexico all the way up into the Black Hills. So we found some of their, you know, stone artifact yeah. tools, that kind of stuff. That that's could date all the way back pretty, there. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty, yeah, human. I didn't stuff. I, like that's 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 early, early humans yeah. on North American territory. That's wild. Uh, yeah, that's exactly. Uh, as far as modern man goes, the first modern man there was the uh, Arakara people, uh, which is uh, now known as the the Maiden tribe or the Madden tribe. Probably butchering the name. Apologize for that. Uh, sadly, I did look up this this uh, this tribe still does exist. They are a nationally recognized tribe in the oh. Americas. Wow, uh, and that's their rare. last uh, their last. <laughs> Census data had them at like 800 people. <laughs> oh, so, okay. so they so. kind of still exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, as much as most of you know these native tribes that we say still exist do, except for like the great big ones, but. Even then, those numbers yeah, those are numbers aren't huge compared to what what they used to be. Yeah, and probably should be. But so you anyway. might be asking yourself, that's why? a different episode. Yeah, different episode. You might be asking yourself, why only eight hundred people? Whatever happened to these uh, to these natives? Uh, the Arakara, oh, I... yeah, they they allied themselves with various <laughs> differing tribes, uh, and they were they were a part of these Black Hills hill, hills area, um, in the in the early like, basically from the dawn of the AD time frame, early man, they've been there. Okay. Um, now they, uh, they allied themselves up with the Cheyenne, the Crow, the Arapaho, the Kiwa, uh, and, uh, and these various different tribes had various different levels of occupation over the Black Hills up until the 18th Mm -hmm. century when the Lakota, primarily the Sioux of the Lakota, uh, forced them off their land by force. And by force, I mean with guns that we gave them. I was going to say the 18th century, that's 1700. So that's, you know, around the time we were really kind of getting out into that area. It it, it seems like uh, tribes got certain tribes were able to grow a lot of their power. uh, When we came that where it used to be kind of more even and and a lot of little ones, we kind of 
empowered a couple of them, apparently with guns, to yeah. go ahead and get rid of uh, everybody else. So the Sioux had various different treaties with white people. Uh, and while we were dealing with our uh, Revolutionary yeah. War, after the whole French and Indian thing fell through, yeah. uh, and we gave a lot of guns and ammunition to various different tribes, including the Sioux, uh, they, they came over and saw the Black Hills and went, we kind of like this land. Uh, it's really cold in Minnesota, which is where they were from. So yeah. ours warmer now. Here. So in 1776, <laughs> less snow maybe. Yeah, a little less snow. So in 1776, while we're fighting our independence, the Sioux are gaining their new nation in the Black Mountains. Okay. So um, and just taking it over from other natives at that at that point, we weren't into the no we weren't there yeah we weren't all yeah we were no we were nowhere near in that area yet nope 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 so the sioux claimed the land in 1776 they call it the black mountains which white man just began referring it to as the black hills once they start getting out there uh with a lot of fur trading that was going on in the late 1700s early 1800s uh when they start poking their head around there okay um and and we call them the black hills mainly because we're like have you seen the other mountain ranges that we took from you people out east? Like way bigger yeah, these than these are, ones. So yeah, those are mountains. That, these are this, just hills. These, these are, just are tiny little hills. Yeah, quit quit flattering yourself. And I want you to keep in mind in the back of your head, the Sioux, the Sioux, the Lakota people, the Sioux. They came from Minnesota. Minnesota. That's where they came from. Okay. That's where the origins okay. of their 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 being is in Minnesota. Uh, okay. So. Wh- this whole Manifest Destiny thing kicks off, and uh, and we need to quickly settle Oregon uh, because uh, it's a d- disputed land between Britain and the United States. So oh, we well, both yeah, agreed, like, it. whoever settles it first kind of gets more claim to it. So that's where the sure. whole Oregon Trail comes in. And when the Oregon Trail comes mm-hmm. in, a lot of settlers start plowing right through this Lakota land Oh, that they don't, they don't like them crossing through the land. Um, yeah, the, mm-hmm. the, making shortcuts of it, and, and probably not just crossing through. No. Probably also doing a good amount of destruction um, along the way. Along the way, yep, yep, yep. So naturally, this uh, this had some consequences, like battles and wars between the Lakota and the Europeans, uh, which were going through the area. And I say Europeans because a large population uh, of the immigrants coming out into Oregon were not just Americans; they were European immigrants that were like, so, "Yeah, we like this idea of free land out so, in Oregon." So this is this is European immigrants that had recently made the travel, maybe recently, all the way from Europe to uh, the the United States, and then decided or, they wanted to go farther west. And, yeah. they, and then they're like, yeah, you know what? That's not enough travel. Yeah, let's. I want to keep going. Do, like six more months on a wagon. <laughs> oh my God! Will you die? Just of suckers for punishment. Right? (laughs) Definitely suckers for punishment. Uh, These uh, wars and battles ultimately uh, uh, lead to a treaty of Fort Laramie in 1868, which the the Americans set up the Black Hills as basically a large reservation for the Native American, uh, the Sioux Reservation. Um, So this great Sioux Reservation that's set up allows them to have the land. And you might be thinking, well, that's pretty nice of the American people for doing that. But in reality, what it is, they're like, we don't want that land. It's mountains. You can't, like, it's, have, you, yeah. have you looked at you it? Put them, in pla- put them in places that you can't farm and doesn't have good, you know, oil, gold, or whatever the else, uh, silver, uh, what have you. And, yeah, you shove them there, and then you take the good land for yourself. And for the it's most the part, way. you know, the early treaty worked successfully. The Native Americans stayed in their region. Uh, the You know, the American government uh, said you can't, like, no Americans in there. That's that's native land. That's you can't don't go there. And this successfully worked out for you know a couple of years at least. In not 18, bad. N- not bad. In 1872, a boy who would grow up to become a great medicine man uh, for the Sioux got sick at nine years old and had a vision. In this vision, he saw that the mountain uh, that Mush- Mount Rushmore now sits on uh, was the origins of all life, Johnny. And on top of these little oh, peaks shit. that are there, there are what's called six grandfathers, which is the mother, the father, oh. and all the cardinal directions of life itself. So north, south, east, west represents all the directions of life. And then, of course mom and dad origins of 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 all of all creation oh. for their peoples well that's incredible a nine-year-old a nine-year-old has this vision. vision when that's, he's sick okay. on his deathbed he hallucinates this uh but he doesn't really tell anybody in his tribe about the vision in great detail until he's 17 so in 1880 is when he finally tells people of this and then of course that why starts... would he wait eight years why would he sit on that for well 
We're going to get there. It's Johnny, a nine-year-old. He's going to keep a secret. Okay, all right. So also keep that in the back of your head. So in 1872, he has the, allegedly has this this vision that uh, but that, then that eight years mountain later is when he told tells him about, about it. it. Yeah, and that that mountain is the the you know the six grandfathers, the origins mm-hmm. of life of their peoples. Okay. Okay. Also keep in mind. He's, wait, wait. He's Sue, and the origins of life Earlier, of his people. Earlier, I was going to say is the in the Black thing Hills. You told me to keep in mind. Yeah. <laughs> is in the Black Hills in South it's Dakota. Minnesota. When they actually come from okay, Minnesota. Maybe the origin of their people, they were there, and they're like, oh, you know what? It's too hot. I want to go where it's colder. And then you Maybe, know, and, and so then they came back? Back, and then, it, and what a coincidence that it happened to be where the United States government put them. Yeah, right? Uh, what a coincidence. And, uh, and you know, being that their origins is Minnesotan, if you've ever been to Minnesota, their origins are more like gambling inside bars and saying, oh, yeah, you betcha. <laughs> So I mean that's today. I don't I don't know if it's Well, it's always been like that. <laughs> so but, much back. Hey, but David, probably. Hey, hey, that's I what mean, I'm going. That's what I'm going with. Gambling in bars. No, yeah, you betcha. Okay. Oh, that's that's fair. I mean that prove prove us wrong, Minnesota. Prove us wrong, right? <laughs> uh now, everything would have been fine and the land could have remained sacred and everything could have been okay if it wasn't for rumor of that that there, there was gold in Demdar Hills. Oh god. And when there's rumors that there's gold in Demdar Damn Hills, it. Now, now people, that law about white people not going there, I'll bet that changes. Uh, sort of. Uh, you're not entirely wrong. Uh, in 1874, Colonel Custard leads an expedition into the Black Hills, I- illegally, I- I- looking yeah, okay, for gold, yeah, yeah. gold in Demdar Hills. Uh, so he leads an expedition into those those hills illegally and was promptly the government said, punished and locked up and put in jail for trespassing, no doubt. Or, or what he does is he finds gold in Demdar oh. Hills, and then immediately tells newspapers like an idiot. First off, Custer's an idiot for many, many reasons, and this is one of the big ones. If you find gold somewhere, yeah, you, shut you up. You don't tell people. You don't tell shit yeah. about shit. You no. just you harvest that gold, and then you go and, and you, then you say, "Hey, I found all of this gold that's mine now over there. It's there's nothing left." Yeah, or you can or tell you, the story. Like, but hey, I found gold in Texas. Take the gold. You, yeah, put people off your trail. Like, go three states over and be like, that's where I found the gold. Like, why yeah. would you tell people about it? You're going to cause a gold yeah, rush. That's a bad, bad move. And oh my God, Johnny. <gasps> unless, unless he wanted a gold rush to happen because he really was just, uh, didn't like the natives for whatever reason might be. And he's like, oh, they shouldn't have a thing. Let's take it. Yeah, that could be it, too. Uh, now, the Who U.S. Knows. government did acknowledge that this wasn't legal, that they shouldn't have had an expedition in there. They shouldn't have gone in searching for gold. And if they did find gold, they should have stopped uh, uh, people from settling the area looking for the gold. But, of course, it's the U.S. government. But, and- you know, I, that's what you should have done. But, you know, you didn't. And now there's gold there. So, so, um, so gold rush. Maybe, gold, yeah, maybe gold, we can have some? Gold rush kicks off and... and, and <laughs> Europeans start flooding to the area illegally, start settling yeah. cities like Deadwood, yeah. which is a great show, by the way. Watch that one on, on wherever. It's, I'm sure Hulu's got it streaming. Uh, you know, they, they form the city of Never Deadwood uh, and, uh, and, you know, illegally, again, like there's no legal jurisdiction here, so, which is also why Deadwood was very bloody because it's like – So, uh, so the, yeah, this no is laws. not a state, not an area, not property is, of the United States at all. It's just this is this is a bunch of land, a yeah. vagrant trans uh, a vagrant uh, uh, trespassers setting up a town, exactly. several towns likely, and, and living lawlessly set, searching there, for yeah, gold. Three major towns, yep, yep. Uh, and the Sioux rightfully got pissed and began killing settlers for being on their sacred land, which you know, like, to be fair, had only uh, been sacred for like two years. Tre- trespassers will be shot like, but trust, I mean, yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna yeah. do uh but trespassers did get shot and this is gonna lead the to the great sioux wars also known as the black hills war uh in 1876 which is actually the last uh, major indian war in the plains so this is the oh and and, and on one. the 100 year anniversary of our independence and also um the black hills being taken over by the sioux Right. Yeah, the Sioux. Yeah, they, they, well, hey. their their birthplace, their normal, their natural, uh, where their ancestors yeah, the, came from. Exactly being taken <laughs> over from. <laughs> exactly. So uh, this this war leads to the famous Battle of Little Bighorn, where Custer is going to be slaughtered on oh. June twenty sixth, eighteen seventy six, which leads to a very this is Little Bighorn. Yeah, this is Little Bighorn. Yeah, this is when this happens. Yeah, all because huh. he found gold and had a gold rush. 
And then the U.S. government even <laughs> said, like, to all the people who were settling there, like, we're not going to protect you if the Indians kill you. But then they kill, <laughs> the, I mean, they massacre Custer, and they're like, well, yeah. can't have that. So the U.S. government has a very reasonable response, and they go on yeah. a, a murdering rampage of Native mm. Americans, regardless of whether yeah. they're Sioux or not. And uh, uh, we've never, we've never really cared to distinguish between no. different types of people who might look similar. That's never <laughs> been. A strong suit. Right. And this ultimately leads European to us. European Americans. Yeah, this ultimately leads us to completely and totally shit on the Fort Laramie Treaty and start pushing the Native Americans off this reservation and relocating them That we them gave to them. That we said, new... this is yours. Yeah, we yeah. give you this. We're like, we're taking it back. You now got to go to other reservations. Not anymore. And the ultimate final culmination. Now, the war is long over by this, but our ultimate final culmination of taking our anger out on the Sioux, ends in 1880 at the Battle of Wounded Knee, and I use that term very, very um, loosely because it's more like a massacre because we go into a camp. At Wounded Knee. Yeah, we go into a camp of Sioux who are refusing to disarm and refusing to relocate, even though it's a camp mostly of women and children and old men. And then, you know, we roll up some cannons and just ob obliterate them. Well, I guess if you don't leave anybody around to, you know, have the other side of the story, then it is just whatever you say. Whatever you say. And that, Jesus Christ. And then that pretty much culminates the American people now owning the Black Hills territory. Uh, hey, new okay, states. But then Mount Rushmore happens. Why? Okay. So, during this gold rush period, once the Americans take over uh, the, the land, um, uh, they, the gold mines in the area are actually producing around $4 million annually, with the silver mines producing around $3 million annually, which in today's money is $191 million total every year for, for many, many years after oh. Americans take over. And you might wonder, you might, it, it's clicking. It's clicking now why we yeah. let this happen. Yeah, that's... And well, no, I, I okay. always knew yeah, if but there's money to be made. We don't care about people, especially if they look different. Um, okay, but if, so if we have successful gold and silver mines, then we just tap them out and then, like, it, it, what do we do with this mountain? Like, really? That's yeah, it? We just that's, we, we took we, it all, uh, emptied by, it, yeah, by and 19... then we're like, we'll turn it into a vault for that Richie Rich kid and what, or whatever? Yeah, by 1920s, the mines were pretty much dried up. Mass exodus out of the state of South Dakota. Uh, and there's now a financial vacuum in the area with no real draw to live in South Dakota. Uh, and and there's <laughs> I mean, still. To this day. <laughs> yeah, uh, because I just I, I looked it up. The current census has uh, South Dakota, the entire state of South Dakota, at 884,000 people, which Ugh. is just, just more. And I mean, just more by like 10,000 people than the city of Indianapolis. So yeah. let that uh -huh. sink in. The city of Indianapolis, and, and that's eight hundred eighty-four thousand people. That the entire just, state, they can't get out for whatever reason. They, you know, they're they're tied down there. Uh, send, send prayers. So, what bigger way? Yeah, send prayers. So, what bigger or better way to to get people back at least to visit the area than create a tourism boom? And what easier way to create a tourism boom than a giant tourist trap? Got to have some kind of something sure. to bring people in yeah. to come and look at. So this whole it seems like there there's easier things. <laughs> it could be a lot easier things than what they're about ready to embark on. Uh, so what happens is you get a, you get this guy uh, by the name of uh, Doan Robinson, who is a historian of South Dakota, who comes up with this idea like, look, if we get a monument and put a big gigantic monument somewhere in these mountains, like into the side of the mountain, or his original idea were these uh, granite pillars called the needles, which is natural granite structures. He's like, why don't we carve that would have been those? Easy. Why don't we carve those into people, and then, you know, people will flood. So he creates this bill, and he brings it up to the state legislature, where he says, okay, I want to you, the state legislator give me money to make this monument to bring tourism in, and we're going to make this monument out of, uh, we're going to have one of the Sioux Nation chiefs pick, you know, we'll have the Sioux Nation pick a chief that they want up there to kind of give them a little, uh, you know, little sorry we oh. stole your land. Uh, and he also wanted famous Dakotians, what? yeah, yeah, famous Dakotians to be up there. And he also oh, proposed well, that's a bad move because no only people yeah. in South Dakota care about that. Yeah. And he also uh, proposed that uh, Lewis and Clark and possibly Sacagawea would also be like carved into these statues I, somewhere. So I like his Mount Rushmore better. Yeah. His initial idea for Mount Rushmore is like uh, an ode to the West, that, you know, ode to like the guys, Oregon Trail and westward expansion. And, oh, and, and a couple thing. of natives and women. Uh, this dude's woke. 
What year is this? Yeah, this is 1923 is when he goes to uh, goes to the state legislature of South Dakota to propose you. this. Yeah. Um, now, uh, the state legislator quickly looks at this and says, no, we don't like it. Oh, like you God. can they say we authorize you to look for land uh, to build this monument, but we're not going to pay for it. So come back, come back with a spot for the land and the better plan, and maybe we'll we'll reevaluate it. Okay. In 1924, after being disheartened a little bit, Robinson does hire a man by the name of Gutzen Borglum uh, to come to South Dakota to check out the granite pillars known as needles to see if he could, you know, sculpt those into something. Now, why did Robinson choose Borglum? Well, Borglum was known as a famous sculptor in the area, at, well, in the United States at the time. He did a head of Abraham Lincoln, uh, which that sat for a brief time in the uh, the Teddy Roosevelt Museum. Uh, and he also okay. did, uh, he did a full, like, stone sculpture of Union General Sheridan. And, uh, and he had also just got done with his portion of working on something called the Stone Mountain, which is a carving of Stonewall Jackson, Robert E. Lee, and Jefferson Davis on the side of Stone Mountain. And he was hired to do this. <coughs> yeah, hold on. Uh, for he his was... political affiliations, no doubt. He was hired to do that sculpture by the Daughters of the Confederacy mm -hmm. on KKK-owned yep. land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And his plans included a KKK altar as part of the Alt whole. An altar? altar? Yeah, like an altar. What the hell is like... a KKK altar? I don't know. This what does that mean? Good. What do they... go? I, the, what do you do? They pray? You... I don't know. This They burn crosses, Johnny. I don't know what the KKK does. It's not something that I... <laughs> they needed an altar. Hey, if you're a part of the KKK, let us know in the comments. <laughs> now, this doesn't mean that he himself was actually really a member of the KKK, Although there are a few dozen letters that indicate that he was likely a member. But to be fair, mm. he didn't actually finish uh, a, a Stone Mountain's monument. He only finished the head of Lee. Got into so a he was a lazy racist? He's a lazy racist. Got into a fight. Apparently he was a bit of a perfectionist and got into a fight over the rest of the monument with the KKK. And they said, screw this, I quit. And busted up his clay, like his clay mock-up of what the... the, the the monument was going to look what? like. He busted it up and left. In so, nineteen, uh, in nineteen. I mean, the KKK are just people who haven't evolved past being toddlers, right? Like, what a temper tantrum! You have a disagreement, and what do you you smash his his clay head that you hired him to to make for you? You freaking children, grow uh. up. So this, uh, so this KKK supporter, I mean KKK collaborator, I mean at least a KKK contractor uh yeah. you know looks at robinson's ideal location and said nope those granite needles are going to erode way too quickly uh, and it won't be a long lasting uh, a sculpture no. you know, out in the nature it's just not going to work yeah so he starts looking around the area to see if there's another suitable place for a monument and he sees the six grandfathers and said hey hey, hey. like that like that nobody's ever <laughs> said that this was sacred land or use do i get land. to take that from brown people too and then <laughs> uh make them upset because mm. Now well, we're stacking the deck in my favor. And I'm glad you said that. So he said, I want to build it there. And yeah, those brown people that you talked about putting on that monument, like uh, Sacagawea, well, Sacagawea and, and some Sioux and, chief. Uh, yeah, we're yeah, not going to do that. How about dead presidents instead? <sighs> and Robinson's like, you know what? That actually makes a little bit of a sense because if we have presidents on the monument, it could be a national monument as opposed to just a local Western South Dakota monument. Likely bring I mean, more that is, it, it is, which is it true. Is a it's true. Monument. Yeah, I, I mean, nobody's going to go to see the first mayor of whatever city in South Dakota. Nobody cares about that. Yeah, they are going to go and look for, you know, hey, our founding fathers kind of thing. Yep, 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 yeah. yep. So they team up with a, a senator, Peter Norbrick of South Dakota, and convince him to like, hey, this is a really good idea. Let's go ahead and go with it. They already start construction on this monument in 1927. So before they ever get any congressional approval, other than the fact that they were granted the use of the land, there's no money coming in other than private donations. But they already start on this project. Okay. They get the now, senator. Wait, now, now, hold up. Are we going to talk about why each, why, why, which presidents? Yeah, we'll chosen? get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Okay. All right. All right. We're just Show already me. carving into the mountain. Nobody we're already carving going into on the yet. Yeah, we're already carving into the mountain. Yep, 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 yep. Or at least making preparations to carve into the mountain. We're getting Cutting down the trees. It's, it's, it's starting. We're, we're starting with this. Uh, so they get uh, Peter Norbrick to convince President 
Coolidge in his last year in office in 1929 to sign off on this whole ordeal, and he gets Congress to approve funds for the construction of this monument. And then you said this is at the end of his term, so he's this he's is on last the, year. Uh, yeah. Whatever. He's like, let's I get, just let's get me a legacy. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> legacy. <laughs> Coolidge, Coolidge's legacy. We got the we got a monument somewhere with some presents on it. But who to put on that monument, right, Johnny? Who's 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 yeah. going to do? And why? Uh, well, I mean, that, obviously George Washington. There you go. Obviously, that's the, that's yeah, the end that's, of my knowledge of who's on it actually well and that's that's the easiest one to pick because he's the founding father ignore the whole using yeah yeah, ignore the whole using his slave's teeth for his own teeth thing uh but he is the founding father so that might that that might actually be why they chose him and he just (laughs) happened to also be the founding father they're like i really liked what this guy was doing to his slaves they also yeah they also all unanimously say that Jefferson needs to be on it because you know he wrote the Declaration of Independence. Uh, ignore fair. we're gonna ignore the fact that he had a whole shit ton of bastard children by rape slaves thing. Right? Ted, yeah. No. Yeah. Teddy Roosevelt uh, becomes uh, becomes another choice because recently he won a Nobel Peace Prize for brokering peace between the uh, the, the Japanese and the Russians in a war that in no way he encouraged Excellent. to happen and then backfired when the Russians. Got their ass kicked by the Japanese. Hmm. He's also a naturalist and did a lot with, uh, you know, forming yeah. the whole national park system. So, well, and, it, the, and makes teddy it. bears, you know, and teddy also, bears. You have the whole thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so that's good. So that's three. That's so far good. Pretty good track record. President. And then done. Last but things. not least, Johnny, we cannot ignore. We cannot leave out the man. The myth, the dictator legend, Abraham Lincoln. You know him, you love him. The He's guy on that, it? yeah, the guy that brought the nation back together oh, after it, yeah, it yeah. split itself through, apart through martial law, <laughs> through, through <laughs> martial law, and just taking people's property and arresting them without due process. I did not know Lincoln was on it. <laughs> yeah, Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln's hmm. the other guy. Lincoln's the fourth guy. Yeah, yeah, Lincoln, Lincoln, Roosevelt, Jefferson. And, uh, and, and Washington, they're all on it. There was even a congressional bill proposed to add a woman, of all things, to the monument. Uh, <laughs> oh, please. It can't have that. Uh, <laughs> has, it, it did, has a woman been a president? <laughs> this did actually get a lot of traction in 1937, uh, but unfortunately oh? it, does, it does fall. The woman of choice was Susan B. Anthony, because after all, she did, uh, hey, women have the right yeah. to vote, She's women's got suffrage, all that. Yeah, all that stuff. She does. We do. She does have a coin. Uh, well, we took her off that. Coin. Had. Yeah, had a coin. Had. Yeah, she's not on that. Not on that coin anymore. We replaced her with an Indian, and then we took the Indian away and replaced it with presidents. So, yeah, <laughs> kind of appropriate. All right. Hey, but you know what? We didn't even get through all the presidents before we stopped that whole coinage too. We're like, ah, screw it. Stop it. <laughs> Now, it does get shot down. Her, her get, she gets shot down for two reasons. First, they run out of money. They're like, yeah, we don't really have enough money to keep this project going. And the yeah, other reason, did, did they have the four carved? And they're like, maybe there's room uh, for another. They're in the process of it, but they find out that there's really not the, the rest of the stone that's there isn't going to support another head. Like it's the other stones yeah, not they're gonna, they're, it's viable for another ship yeah, it away, it fall, yep. collapse in the mountain, yep. whatever. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, yeah, cons- no, one want, no one wants a Susan B. Anthony head sliding down a mountain <laughs> onto a bunch of tourists. Uh, bad omen, bad omen. Uh, construction, like I said, starts October 4th, 1927. It's going to go all the way out uh, until October 31st, 1941, when they run out of money. So in reality, to to if you've never seen Mount Rushmore, it's pretty massive. The fact that they yeah, got this good. done in under, you know, under 15 years is... Pretty impressive, and uh, in be- in between wars and stock market crashes, and he, uh, I mean, they had they had what? Well, they start yeah. There's the a stock yeah, market crash a, of 1929. They had the, yeah. the depression start, yeah. and then all the way through the finish yeah, up what, right yeah. before the war or yeah. into the, the war. They're like, in the war. Yeah, uh, October 31st, 1941. So right before the war. We're right before the right war. before. Right. Pearl, yeah. Pearl oh, Harbor hasn't been, finishing that. Yeah, Pearl Harbor hasn't been bombed yet, uh, which is also probably a reason why we're like, hey, there's a world war going on again. Maybe we should probably yeah, maybe uh, yeah, maybe start funneling that money elsewhere. Uh, the carving was done by 400 uh, uh, artists, and by artists I mean miners, like yeah. literal like. Yeah. You know, gold yeah, this, miners. People that were who left know over. how to chip away at stone. <laughs> yeah. And the primary tool used was dynamite. And surprisingly, Johnny, yeah, that's how they blast what? away the wow. major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it's major. Almost yeah, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost all done by dynamite. Yeah. Well it's done. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> well done is right. Uh, and, and surprisingly, 
in the 1920s through the 30s with 400 workers using dynamite. Nobody died. Nobody died. <laughs> like, that's impressive. There's no record of anybody dying. No, dying. no, no, Johnny. Like, like <laughs> Empire State mm. Building, people totally died. Uh, Golden Gate Bridge, people totally died. Uh, the, the Hoover Dam, people totally died. So, not sounds like miner, miners know what they're doing. No, nobody, nobody died. Um, nobody died. Or, or the takeaway could be that uh, dynamite is safer than heights. Heights. It could be that. It could be that. Um, Jefferson actually, when they started started building it, uh, Washington was uh, was off to the right, and Jefferson was actually off to the left. Halfway through making Jefferson face, they realized, oh, that's not going to work because uh, Jefferson's face is uh, – there's, there's the rock is not stable and it's starting to show signs that it's going to fall off or erode too quickly. So we'll just blow his face off the side of the mountain and then build Jefferson's face next to Washington on the right. So Jefferson actually started on the Ooh. left, had to be moved to the right because uh, – uh, Because they – and they had a – and that mountain is different forever because they – so they just – Yes, they blew, blew it up. up what yeah, you, you can had. actually – if you look at the <laughs> monument, you can actually – see like yeah. you oh, can't like see a, a face but you can yeah. see where it's like been blown off yeah yeah yep, it's yep, not yep. a natural erosion not a natural erosion huh. line there to the to the left of uh, of washington um the original design actually had them as full busts not just their heads but like full bodies shoulders shoulders everything there was also supposed to be like a carving of the louisiana purchase like the outline of the louisiana purchase and a big gigantic like declaration of independence <laughs> and, and 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 big old middle fingers to all of the native americans <laughs> pretty pretty much like we're- uh, but they ran out of money, so that's, so that's, that's it. Good. So that's the only reason. Good, good. Because well, we and, had to start. We had to start making weapons for the war, and, <laughs> and all, and the, all yeah. efforts had to go toward towards the war. And the stone wasn't. Uh, and the stone wasn't really all that. Wasn't going to be able to take it. Yeah. Now you, you at this point you might be asking yourself where the hell the name Rushmore come from because we never had a president named Rushmore. So why is it? And it was. And Rushmore? it wasn't Mount Rushmore before. It and it was not Mount the Rushmore the before. Mountain. Nope. Nope. So in early portions uh, of this proposed monument, a businessman by the name of Charles Rushmore visited the area multiple times, including like some of the first original surveys. He's watching it, looking at it. He goes, hey, what's the name of this mountain? And everybody's like, I don't know. No, it doesn't have a name. Not, I guess. not oh, not, the six grandfathers. grandfathers. Not. <laughs> no, that doesn't like that. We don't. Oh, not the oh, Black Hills. No, no, no. Okay. Oh, yeah. Doesn't have a name. He goes, why don't we just name it Rushmore, Mount Rushmore? <laughs> and after donating five thousand dollars, and is, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> after donating five thousand dollars, which is the equivalent of seventy-three thousand dollars today, the Board of Geographical Names, which is the funniest thing that we have in the United States, we That's have a, a board, board yeah. called Geographic Names. Gives him the That's... honor of the name Mount Rushmore in 1930, which is a bargain for the naming rights of a monument. When you consider, I mean, think about how how much do people pay for the naming rights to like uh, whatever stadium? Lucas Oil uh, paid 122 million dollars for the naming rights of the Lucas Oil Stadium and for the Colts. That's significant. Yeah. So they got a steal, steal. Yeah. Instead, for... they should have just paid that money towards building the stadium instead of just taxpayers doing it. But you know, what are you gonna do? And what are you gonna do? In uh, in 1933, the National Park Service took over the uh, the Mount Rushmore and the whole construction operation, saying, "Yeah, we're paying for it, so ours is." Yeah, fair that's enough. How it works, right? I mean, you know. In uh, in 1934, Washington's face is done and is unveiled, followed by Jefferson's in 36, Lincoln's in 37. Uh, no other additions were officially announced in 37. Like like they said in 1937, no more additions. Like we know we talked about Susan B. Anthony, but top three. Can't... Yeah, I mean, stop there. Bang! One, two, three. Mountain can't sustain Perfect. it. It's... We we're running out of money, so no more, no more. We're done. Uh, okay, and then. And then in the uh, in, what in, rich in, racist person or whatever. Yeah, in, in nineteen <laughs> in nineteen thirty nine, Borglum, the whole designer of this thing, you know, the the architect, not the yeah. original idea, but the architect, the guy who's sculpting it, he's gonna die of an embolism after he saw a oh. brown man marry a white woman. Which I'm making I'm that sorry. up. He didn't he didn't have an embolism after oh. seeing a brown man marry a white woman. I just thought it'd be funny because he's a KKK guy. <laughs> Uh, but he did. He did. He did have a. He did have an embolism. But he did die. Life. He did. Have okay. An we don't. He, it it hey, could have been because of that. But you it know what? Been, it it could have been know. because it could have been because they, he heard that they were thinking about Susan B. Anthony. He's like over my dead body. <laughs> and <laughs> dead. 
<laughs> yeah, but his they son... didn't do Susan B. Anthony. There is no woman on it. Instead, nope. the fourth person added was added Lincoln. because it's Lincoln. Uh, his, his, which is funny because his son, uh, Borglum's son, takes over the whole sculpting, and Borglum's son name is uh, Lincoln. So Lincoln is going to finish up Lincoln. That's kind of nice. How about that? Uh, and when and when he takes over, it's discovered that they don't really have enough money. There's a whole World War thing that's starting, uh, and. Yeah. Uh, and since the original designer died, and it's not possible to do the final busts and the massive carve out of the outline of the Louisiana Purchase and the whole stupid massive Declaration of Independence, <laughs> the we're carve gonna, out. How we're big was the carve out of the, was the Louisiana the carve out of the Louisiana Purchase going to be like the size of those heads? All, like you could I'm, read I'm it sure, in the same I'm spot. Sure. You well, see. The de- yes, the <laughs> Declaration. Look at, look yeah, at their heads. the Declaration of Independence was designed <laughs> to be read from like a distance, so that was going to be massive. Oh and they're like, yeah, God. this is just we're just gonna like just do the heads, just do the. I'll heads, tell you what. How about instead them. we'll just make a copper plaque and put it at the bottom. Of it. <laughs> well, like yeah, do, do the heads and be done with it. Uh, the end came in 1941 with Lincoln being finished at a total cost of nine hundred and eighty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety two dollars and thirty two cents, which really is under not a million dollars. Under a million dollars, yeah. And in today's money, that's still only seventeen point four million dollars, which is nothing. I mean, that's <laughs> nothing. That that's that's how like, much was the how much was Dallas's stadium? <laughs> Wasn't it that. nearly a billion or something like that? Oh yeah, way more. Oh than my that, god, yeah. so that's uh, not bad. So like we probably underpaid all of those miners who were doing we, that incredibly dangerous, very precise work. I guarantee they were you definitely we did. not paid enough. I guarantee you we did. Now, I can't end this episode without talking about the secret room, which has become a big thing since the whole uh, uh, the, the National Treasure you know, uh, movie that came out. And they're like, oh, there's a secret room. That's where all oh, the money's not, buried at. Yeah. Not from what was the movie where uh, the family had their uh, safe in Mount Rushmore's nose, George Washington's nose, and the robbers got to it, and then they became really upset when they found out that all of their biggest treasures were just bicycles and children's drawings and stuff. I have no idea. You don't know that movie? I don't I know that movie, I, it, Johnny. It's, it's like a fever dream right now. I can't think of the name of the movie. Well, maybe uh, let us know if you know what, it, what uh, we're talking about. Uh, so Borglum did design a room. He did design a secret room, which was supposed to – well, it's not even a secret room. He did design a room that was supposed to be called the Hall yeah, of that- Records. It was supposed to be a record of all American history. It was supposed to contain like all of our like important historical artifacts, like so a, this like was a copy of be... the Declaration of like an original copy of the Declaration of Independence, like an original copy yeah. of the Constitution. It was supposed to be like all of our significant historical artifacts were supposed to be stored in this museum inside Mount Rushmore, which was supposed to be accessible to the public as like a visitor oh, center so museum. Oh, so not just like a safe. No, this was supposed to be like accessible to the American people. That was his idea. He got 70 feet into the rock building this room behind Lincoln's head before he's like, all right, I'm running out of time and money. We really got to focus on the heads first. I'll worry about this Hall of Records later. Yeah. And so now is there a 70 foot hole in Lincoln's head? (laughs) Yes. uh, Behind his head. It's actually, it's behind, it's behind his head. No, it's not. (laughs) I didn't even, I didn't even make that connection until just now. There's, he had to do that on purpose, right? You had to do that on purpose. He had I mean, to know what he was doing. There's no other explanation. Oh my gosh! Uh, I was like, so in, in it, in it <laughs> sat unfinished for all this time. Uh, in 1998, they actually did wind up finishing it, sort of. And by that, what I mean is that they put uh, they did put a door on this this cave, and they put 16 enamel enameled panels that contain biographical historical information about Mount Rushmore and the people on Mount Rushmore, uh, which copies of those are on display in the visitor center, but that room itself is off limits and is sealed and nobody's gone in there since they finished it in 1998, allegedly. Is, is there, there, but there's probably no reason other than it's just there's nothing there. Right? There's not like a There's some like thing. plaques. There's not like a, no, there's like, yeah, well, there's, there's no easy way. There. There's no easy way up there. Yeah, it's just a pain. It's it's just a pain in the neck, and there's no reason to go in there. Essentially, or or, or it's a bomb. It's a bomb shelter for VIPs, like you know our current president. If anything goes wrong, which has been a rumor, it's also a rumor that the national treasure. If it, so, if anything goes wrong, inst- in instead mountain. of instead of our, the, our president just having bomb shelters, bunkers, whatever the hell's whatever else in Washington nearby, 
you know, like they're, under they're going the, to like under fly the White him House out. to yeah, what? Yeah, Mount Rushmore. Fly them out to South Dakota, yeah, and then yeah. get him up into a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, okay. I, maybe, I mean, maybe that's it. It's just, it's just a, it's just a seventy foot room. With it's, it's some a giant plaques. empty room. It's, it's a giant yeah. empty room with some plaques in it. That's, that's really all it is. And you can, you can go on if you don't, if you don't want to go to South Dakota to see Mount Rushmore, you can go online and you can read what's on those plaques. Do they have, do they have any um, pictures the of Mount Rushmore on the internet? Online yeah, they do. Anywhere? They have ton, tons could, of pictures. Yeah, I could find. Okay, that might be interesting to actually see it, you know. Pictures of the room? I don't know cool. if there's I don't know if there's no, pictures of no, the room. No, just Mount Rushmore. I just want Oh to yeah, know no, there's to, there's totally go online I did and see Mount Rushmore. I did I did take a trip out to Mount Rushmore when I was a wee, wee little thought. My parents always was it took a, a family vacation? Yeah, every every <laughs> no, summer okay. my yeah, every summer my family took us on uh, on historical vacations. Which I hated as a kid, but now as an adult, I'm like, man, I wish I could go. I'm gonna here. go back. <laughs> I'm gonna go back. Uh, but the only thing that the only thing that stuck out on this trip was that dad jackknifed the camper and put a big old dent in the van. Uh, that, and I, that stood out. That was more. That uh, one stood, that stuck yeah. with you more than seeing. That, Mount that Rushmore. yeah, that that stuck out. And then we we also took a tour of a buffalo herd. Like we drove a jeep through a buffalo herd, and the the, the buffalo. Cool. The buffalo weren't moving; like they just sat in. Like two of them were fucking. Two of them were fucking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, and then we were trying to like go through the road, and then like they were just sitting and not moving. And the guide's like, "It's okay, we'll just wait for a minute." And after like five or ten minutes, he goes, "You know, I don't think they're gonna move, so we're just gonna go ahead and bump them." So in this crappy, rickety old jeep, he's like fender bumping them, bumping them, <laughs> and they're like, "Ah, get off me!" Ah, fine. I, they could. They could have turned. Oh, in retrospect, ram- could have, yeah, and we totally, flipped that yeah, so totally easily. Died. Yeah, we could have died. Oh my god! But these are like farm, like they're farm buffalo. They're real buffalo. Oh yeah, yeah, buffalo. they're they're gigantic cows, cows essentially. Yeah. But those are the yeah, those are what stuck at not Mount Rushmore. I don't remember much from Mount. I mean, I remember seeing it. I remember like going into like the visitor center and seeing the museum and stuff. But I don't. Yeah. It's kind of cool at night. They have it lit up at night. I uh, got lights going up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's totally worth a trip out to South Dakota where there's nothing else to do. That's it for this week in Historic Hindsight. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe, like, and review, and join us next week when we talk about the Transcontinental Railroad.